plans to legalise gay marriage in England and Wales are dividing political opinion at Westminster. Here the controversy is just as bitter. For some, same-sex marriage is a civil right denied. In terms of politics, yeah, completely second class, yet we pay the taxes like everybody else. Gay couples here want the right to marry and to be allowed to apply to adopt. What would you teach your children about sexuality? I would teach them very simply at a young age that some people like boys, some people like girls. Some churches accept gay marriage. We support the full emancipation of same-sex couples. There'll be no shame in our home and Maya will not have to deal with shame and embarrassment. But others stand opposed. It's not a matter of dogma, it's pure human reason. Uh, and just because people claim something is about equality doesn't mean it actually is. We investigate if a new fault line is opening up across politics and society here. There's a real need for our politicians to leave their own religious beliefs at home. So who does a loyalist lesbian vote for? Is this a question? If the most important thing to them is same-sex marriage, then I suspect that the UP aren't their best option. <laughs>
and we're a cash from society because of that. Northern Ireland was the first place in the UK to hold same-sex civil partnerships, but it had been the last to decriminalise homosexuality. On the day the most recent census was carried out in 2011, there were 766 people living in civil partnership households here. John O'Doherty is among a new generation of campaigners. He's director of the Rainbow Project, a gay rights organisation. He's been living with his partner Shane for three years. For them, a civil partnership would not be sufficient. They want to marry. What's your definition um, of marriage? I've always just sort of took it as like my mum and dad, they'd be married and happy and love each other and brought up a family and still going strong. And that's sort of what it meant to me, instead of a definition. Whereas I'd like to think me and John are on the right track to be on my gut too. And would you like to get married at some stage? Yeah, I would. I do. <laughs> <laughs> but is a civil partnership not enough? No, because it's not the same. People don't grow up as kids saying, oh, I want to have a civil partner someday. You want to have a husband or a wife. You want to be married. But it's a commitment. It is a commitment, but there are differences and it's not seen as equal. Just last month, Sinn Féin urged MLAs to vote to legalise same-sex marriage. People do not want to see citizens discriminated against. They are changing because our lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender communities have said enough is enough. The move to legalise same-sex marriage mobilised churches to intervene. Well, we believe that the current legal definition of marriage as between one man and one woman, with its historic and biblical basis, is a fundamental building block of society. Both the Presbyterian Church, the largest Protestant denomination here, and the Catholic Church petitioned all MLAs to oppose the motion. We say that homosexual acts are inconsistent with a Christian view of life, they're inconsistent with the natural law uh, and the intention and purpose of our sexual capacity. Proponents of gay marriage have framed much of the debate as an issue of equality, but those against argue that same-sex marriage can never be equal to marriage between a man and a woman. In fact, you can't say these two things are the same. While it's a very powerful and emotive word, equality, and an important word, it doesn't apply. With respect, the word equality doesn't apply in this case because it just doesn't suit your dogma. It's not a matter of dogma, it's pure human reason. Uh, and just because people claim something is about equality doesn't mean it actually is. We don't argue this matter simply as a matter of religion. Marriage, irrespective of religion, has always been recognised by society as a fundamental institution on which the state and society is based. So when one looks at the continuum and the social justice and God's love, working... But gay marriage is not opposed by all churches here. Chris Hudson is a Unitarian minister of All Souls Church in Belfast. Then it is obvious that we support the full emancipation of same-sex couples in our society. By law, he is unable to marry a gay couple, but he does offer blessings to those who've entered into a civil partnership. Today, he is holding a naming ceremony for a lesbian couple's baby. We give to you the name Maya Ruth Tabakin. Are you preaching from the text of the Bible here? Well, I believe I am. God's love is not exclusive and includes all people in all forms. Let it become a name honoured and respected for wisdom and good deeds. We've got to remember that the, the apostles and the disciples uh, and the evangelists, they were talking about God's love within the context of the culture they knew. We are not of their culture. If more people agreed with your interpretation of the scripture, wouldn't there be crowds and crowds of people coming here? You can't judge people's faith by whether they attend a church. I'd love to see them queuing outside my church to come in. Maya's lesbian parents availed of a sperm donation via a private clinic in Europe. Having a child was something Paula, Maya's birthing mother, had always wanted. 
Paula also wanted a religious ceremony to celebrate her daughter's birth. Well, I personally am deeply religious and I wanted a blessing done with, with God. And it means that there'll be no shame in our home and Maya will not have to deal with shame and embarrassment about who her parents are. However, Paula's partner chose to remain anonymous. There is um, the problem of my partner who can't be identified. This is due to, um, to having an elder, elderly family and we don't want to, uh, to cause any disruption there. I'm going to run out the door with her, Paula. <laughs> Isn't she gorgeous? Do you, the congregation, promise to commit yourselves to support this family and Maya Ruth? We do. We do. A recent survey in Britain of attitudes on gay marriage suggests that people of faith are just as likely to support same-sex marriage as oppose it. The survey found that those who identified with the religion were evenly split on allowing same-sex couples to marry. 43% for and the same proportion against. Matters of faith and public policy can sometimes collide. The Justice Minister, David Ford, is a practicing Presbyterian. He supports same-sex civil marriage, a view at odds with his own church. David Ford chose to step aside from active duties as an elder in his church after a number of the congregation expressed unease at his stance. What I have to do as a legislator and indeed as a minister, is ensure that I provide the appropriate services for everybody in this society, very many of whom do not share my beliefs. You still have the same religious belief, but yet you want marriage equality here. There is a difference, isn't there? I believe in the separation between church and state. I think what we need to do is to recognise that diversity, recognise that the equality obligations on the state are to provide services on a fair and equal basis. And the state must also recognize the rights of faith groups in their own practice. If a politician belongs to a particular faith community, <clears throat> that faith community has a right and a responsibility to assist that politician in understanding the teaching of that particular church. This idea of separation of church and state in some bald way, as if you can extract religion from who people are and what society should be, that's a load of absolute nonsense. The Assembly rejected last month's motion by Sinn Féin to legalise same-sex marriage. Those who voted against included 50 Unionist MLAs and three members of the Alliance Party. All 37 of the Nationalists who voted, along with three Unionists, were in favour. The DUP tabled what's called a petition of concern, which ensures that a motion will only be approved if the majority of Nationalists and Unionists back it. There are some people today who seem to think that you know, if you don't fall into line with their line of thinking, then you're the intolerant one. You know, and I think we should be a little bit more respectful of people who have deeply held, sincerely held views on things and we shouldn't attempt to mock them in any way. Who's mocking them? Well, you know, I think, I think you know, I'm not going to get into that sort of mind of you question. Know, whatever, why you know, would you, you say you, somebody's you, mocking you, them? You ask it. Well, I have heard people describe those who oppose same-sex marriage and don't want to see a redefinition of, of marriage as bigots. They're not bigots, they're people who care deeply about the society they live in and they support marriage. For Kerry and Julianne, the politics of the debate has posed a particular problem. They are lesbian loyalists, which causes them a big dilemma when it comes to deciding who to vote for. What about the DUP? I mean, they obviously want to stay in the union, OK? They're not pushing do for they? equal rights. That's the thing, do they? On certain things, yes, but like everything... What do you mean? They people? want to be British, but they don't want to fall in line with... British law? In Northern Ireland, we're about 30 years behind the rest of the UK. So who does a loyalist lesbian vote for? Is this a question? At the minute, there's, you literally can't be gay and a loyalist. We met two loyalist lesbians during the course of making this programme and they say, you know, who do we vote for? Well, you know, it, it depends on what issue is most important in their lives and but what if, they want to vote for. If it's marriage equality, you know, and, and, if it's and, and equality. I, and I, haven't, I have yet to meet anybody who votes on a single issue. 
Political analysts say this single issue has revealed signs of a new political religious fault line. It's an issue which has crossed religious divides. Uh, it's perhaps um, made for unusual alliances. Um, it's maybe giving people a glimpse of a different type of politics which doesn't automatically fall into um, Protestant and Catholic boxes. France last weekend became the ninth country in Europe to legalise gay marriage. Closer to home this week, MPs have been fiercely debating whether to legalise it in England and Wales. And it's also on the radar in Scotland and the Republic. It's on the agenda of the government in the South, Scotland, Wales and England. And of course it should be on the agenda. I mean, it's not before time that legislation should be brought in and the North is going to be left behind. The current stand against same-sex marriage may be a case of history repeating itself. You will legislate perversion and immorality. Despite fierce opposition from unionist politicians in the 80s, the European Court of Human Rights forced the Westminster government to decriminalise homosexuality here. Should gay marriage be legalised in the rest of the UK, but not here? A legal challenge may force Stormont to bring the law into line with Britain. We already have same-sex couples knocking on our doors, uh, saying that they want to take a case uh, should this transpire. So I think a court challenge is inevitable if political leaders here abdicate their responsibilities to legislate for equality. A court ruling may ultimately force the hand of politicians at Stormont. This assembly will be dragged kicking and screaming to legislate for what it should have been doing in the first place. Marriage equality is at the fore of the gay rights campaign across the UK. But not every gay couple wants to be married. Vincent and his partner David are happy with their civil partnership. They have been together for 12 years. We've no intention to like, upgrade to a, a marriage from a civil partnership. I think the equality issue is really important because we shouldn't, our relationship shouldn't be seen as somehow different or lesser or a different category from everybody else. Before Vincent came out as a gay man, he was married with a son, Connor. Together, Vincent and his partner, David, helped to raise Connor. And Connor's wife recently gave birth to a baby boy, the first grandchild in the family. What are you most looking forward to about being a grandfather? That time, you know, in a few months where he's started to walk and you're, you're got his wee hand and he's walking down the street or you go to a park. It's all new to me. Um, <laughs> I've changed my first nappy, was it last week or so? Mm -hmm. And oh, uh, learning sort of how to feed. It, but it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. Um, it's, it's an opportunity I think I never thought that I would ever have. Vincent, some people would look at you as a gay couple with your grandchild and think there's something wrong with that. I understand that, but I mean, my parents weren't gay. They were a heterosexual couple, and uh, the two kids, and one of them's gay and one of them's straight. You know, um, I've raised a son who's heterosexual and has a wonderful son. In Northern Ireland, the issue of gay adoption runs parallel to the campaign for same sex marriage. A single person, gay or heterosexual, can apply to adopt but cohabiting couples, irrespective of whether they are gay or heterosexual, are ruled out. A heterosexual couple could choose to marry and then apply to adopt, but gay couples don't have that option. They can, however, foster, and John and Shane have applied to be foster parents. Do remember when we got Sophie? When did you both have the first serious sit-down chat about having children? John had said that he'd always thought about fostering and and I started looking into it and I've been going through the process since. Yeah. How did your families take it when you had said to them, look, we are going down a fostering route here? Uh, great. Um, absolutely supportive. My sister is one of our references and both our parents are very encouraged. Now Shane says that it, was, it never crossed his mind that he wouldn't have the option of having children. Did you think it was going to be ruled out for you? Never. Um, there was never any doubt in my mind that I was going to have children. I actually would have expected at this time in my life that I would have had children by now. I find it really hard um, that people who don't know me, who've no idea anything about me, about my family, about my upbringing, decide that I'm not suitable to be a parent. 
It it baffles. It really does. What about you, Shane? Do you get upset? Sometimes. We've got a great house here, we've got a great relationship and hopefully we can bring other people in to help enjoy it as well. Northern Ireland is the only part of the UK where unmarried couples are banned from applying to adopt. The Human Rights Commission last year challenged the law and the High Court ruled that the ban on gay and unmarried couples adopting children is unlawful. That ruling is being appealed by the DUP Health Minister. And I will always act in the, in the interest of the child because it is not a human right to adopt. People need to get that very clear. Uh, but we must always ensure that the human rights of the child are ensured. And people can get up on particular hobby horses, but they don't provide solutions. Of course, child welfare is paramount in all aspects of our lives. And we have to do everything to protect our children. But where I part company with some of the statements by the Minister of Health is I believe some of his statements in relation to uh, our gay lesbian community is discriminatory and some of his actions are discriminatory and that's not good enough. The DUP say all the Health Minister's decisions are taken objectively and his department says he's committed to a comprehensive reform of adoption law here. As a point of principle, you know, it's yes or no. Do you think that gay couples should be allowed to adopt children? They're allowed to foster. Let, 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 let's look at what, what the minister comes forward with in his proposals. What do you he think? Is, he is looking at a very, very comprehensive... You know, I, I think What I think is we should focus far, far less on who is adopting and a focus on, on, put a focus on who is being adopted. An Equality Commission survey suggests that overall negative attitudes towards gay people here are decreasing. Nevertheless, 27% of those surveyed said they would mind having a gay person as a neighbour. But when asked if they'd be unhappy if a close relative were to form a relationship with a gay person, the figure almost doubled. 42% said they'd be unhappy. I tested the opinion on the streets of Belfast. Tell me, gay people, should they be allowed to marry? Oh yes, definitely, yes, I have. I thoroughly disagree with gay marriage. Definitely not. Absolutely, definitely not. It says so in the Bible. Why do you think people might have a problem with this? Um, people maybe are still living in the olden days. One man, one woman. People should have equal rights. Family and what's best for children are flashpoints in the same-sex marriage debate. But the generation who have grown up in same-sex households also want to contribute to the debate. Connor Prendergast was raised by lesbian parents. He's become an advocate for same-sex parenting and wants to change what he sees as prejudice towards families like his own. Hi everyone, my name is Connor Pendergrast and I'd like to talk to you briefly about my family. So there's me, my brother Dara and my parents Anne and Bernadette. I don't think I feel different because of my family situation, no not at all. My friends all have different types of families. But the thing that they all have in common is that their parents love them and, and that they love them back and that's, that's what's really important. I don't feel really a difference there at all. Do you think there's an element of sexism in that some people are comfortable with the idea of children being raised by two mothers but not so comfortable with them being raised by two fathers? I do. I think there is a, a latent homophobia there. People would probably expect two mothers to raise children perfectly well, but there is the idea that men are not the, the caring, loving parents. Opponents of same-sex marriage say society is best served by keeping marriage between a man and a woman. It, this simply comes back to the idea of what do you make the norm and what is the gold standard for the bringing up of children. The best place for a child to be brought up is in a marriage between its mother and father. But anything less than the gold standard is that second best? Well, you're putting words in my mouth. I'm just simply saying that this, it's what you make the norm in society. The best situation, the situation that society has always respected as special is that between a woman and a man as mum and dad in a marriage. <laughs> Overall, research into the effect on a child of same-sex parenting is not conclusive. The studies are ongoing. 
clinical psychologist Denise McCartan believes that children thrive in stable, loving families. What's best for children in terms of parenting is to have two compatible parents, irrespective of their gender or sexual identity. Children in same-sex parents are um, just as likely to be successful at school. They're just as popular with their peer group. They're just emotionally just as well adjusted as their peer group. Families in Northern Ireland now have many permutations. If you want a family, that nurturing thing where you want to raise kids and be able to pass on something myself and the life and also your, your heritage in the future, that, that's, that's achievable. Having a family of their own really matters to Shane and John. The reality is that the majority of people grow up with that human instinct to want to become parents. Just because you happen to be gay doesn't mean that that disappears or that goes away. But you may never be a dad. It's unimaginable, really. Um, and it's not just about being a dad, it's about having a family, having my family extended, having that experience of parenthood that my parents had with the person I love. It's just unimaginable. Although he doesn't want a gay marriage for himself, Vincent sees the momentum behind the campaign as irreversible. People will look back and laugh and say, how did the church or how did politicians get on the wrong side of this? Yeah. The generation, the future that uh, Ethan would be part of will look back and wonder what was the fuss about, you know? That's my hope anyway. Those on the other side of the debate believe their values are being attacked. Does secularism have a right to dominate the debate either? No. What we need is genuine diversity. The new phobia is religion, uh, and that's not the mark of an equal or a diverse pluralist society. The Justice Minister says gay marriage has become the touchstone for conflicting cultural values here. I think we probably have, if you want to term it, a culture war in a number of different areas. And the issue about same-sex relationships is a large part of that. There is significant social change happening in this society. I think this society is becoming increasingly diverse. And I think for some people it's quite difficult to recognise that. As it stands, same-sex couples in Northern Ireland cannot marry and are banned from applying to adopt. If I said to you, you could wake up tomorrow morning and you marry Shane, or you could legally adopt as a gay couple, what would you choose? So we have to decide. I agree. How would you feel if you were told that you had to pick? If it's the case that you know marriage equality, you know, is not brought in here, but it is in the rest of the UK, would you stay here? Yes, I would. I don't know, that's really tough. You can't marry me if you move and I'm here. <laughs> a motion to legalise gay marriage is unlikely to come before the Assembly again for at least six months. It's not unrealistic to forecast that the rest of the UK could, if mandated, legalise same-sex marriage before here. Should that scenario play out, for how long will Northern Ireland say no? It was the longest campaign of the Second World War.